Will I go to prom with you? Ah, I ass weird. I screwed it up. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cartoon TV couples of 2020. You don't, you don't think I'm chaotic and crazy and make a bunch of messes? No, you definitely do that. Apparently I can destroy anything I touch. <laughs> Stay away from me if you don't mind. That's not going to be easy, m lady. I love you, okay? <laughs> At least they'll find their skeletons entwined forever. For this list, we'll be looking at the cutest, funniest, and altogether best animated romances, or love interests, from shows that aired new episodes in 2020. Have you been shipping a pair that we've left off? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Elliot and Diane Birch, Big Mouth. In some ways, Elliot and Diane really are your typical cartoon parents, doing everything they can to support their kids while also embarrassing them at every possible opportunity. Not only did she prepare a fantastic meal and birth three beautiful children, mm. no drugs. Oh, please, Nick slipped right out of me. Mom, Andrew's here. He's family. Anyway, he shouldn't be afraid of a vagina. Okay, can we be excused? But they're also hugely modern, taking a sex-positive, self-esteem-focused approach to parenting that emphasizes being comfortable in your own skin, and treating others with respect above all else. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot. You don't like to be touched. We can fist bump. Hello, Nicholas. Okay, Dad, you can give me one hug. No, no, no. I respect your boundaries. And because of how fully they embrace these values in their own lives, they have a happy, supportive romance of their own even if they tend to share a little too much of it at times. Oh yeah, I think we should go upstairs. Reading you loud and clear, big mama. <laughs> Number nine, Troy Sandoval and Benson Meckler, Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts. Like a lot of great fantasy and sci-fi series, the real drama in Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts is often less about the strange creatures that we encounter along the adventure and more about the simple human drama going on between the main characters. And when we get back, you and I are gonna talk flapjacks versus pancakes. Different or the same? Uh, the, the same. same. I guess we'll have to find something else to talk about. It's date. The deft touch with which it handles the more intimate moments was fully on display in Benson's incredibly chill coming out scene. And this continued into his blossoming relationship with Troy. Will I go to prom with you? Ah, I asked weird, I screwed it up. No, 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 that was really cute. It's just, I was literally about to ask you. The answer's yes! Their whole dynamic, from Benson's awkward early attempts to impress Troy to their parting kiss is just heartwarmingly wholesome. You usually don't have these kind of emotions, but uh, feels good. Number eight, Marinette Dupont Chang and Adrian Agreste, Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Remember how Peter Parker's love life was always a complete mess because, on top of dealing with the everyday pressures of being a high schooler in love, he was spending half his time fighting crime? Well, imagine how crazy things get when both partners have a secret identity that the other one is totally unaware of. Are we supposed to know each other? I'd be surprised if we weren't. Ladybug and Cat Noir's relationship is an excellent mess. A will-they-won't-they -they story full of near misses and almost moments as they try to find love from behind a mask. All right then, with your permission, milady. But come on, who doesn't love a crime-fighting couple? Apparently I can destroy anything I touch. <laughs> Stay away from me if you don't mind. That's not gonna be easy, m lady. Number seven, Howard and Harold McBride, The Loud House. Howard and Harold's introduction to a series already bustling with big personalities caused a rating surge for a couple of reasons. This is it. Time to make history. Hey, Clyde. Hi, Mr. McBride. Hi, Mr. McBride. As the first ever married gay couple to appear on a Nickelodeon animated series, they were pretty groundbreaking. And as a cartoon couple, they were just plain lovable. They offer their son Clyde plenty of affection and attention, providing a calm counterpoint to the manic Loud House. <laughs> watching me the whole time? Thank you! I love you! We oh, love, we you, love too. you too! And they complement each other perfectly, with Harold's more laid-back approach counterbalancing Howard's neurotic tendencies. They're the sort of couple that immediately makes viewers wish they would adopt them too. You two dads, get over here! 
welcome. It's good to have you. Number six, Beast Boy and Raven, Teen Titans Go. Beast Boy and Raven's romance follows a pretty typical TV template, harboring long-running crushes on each other, but never quite finding themselves able to admit their feelings at the same time. You always be the only one in my heart. No. Raven, will you be my girlfriend? No. Of course, in other ways, it's nothing like your standard TV romance. He's a metahuman able to transform into animals, and she's a half-demon with superpowers. So their romance does have certain unusual obstacles. Beast Boy, thank you. You ain't gotta thank me. I'm sorry I got you into this mess in the first place. It's cool. I should have believed in you. You're quite the little magic man after all. Still, even if their relationship spends more time off than on, the friction between them ensures that sparks are always flying. Girl, I ain't got no time for you. Being a drummer be the only thing I can focus on right now. It's over. Don't call me, don't text me, nothing. Ow! And hey, they almost got married. Number five, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn might have originally popped up as the right-hand gal of a certain clown prince, but the latest animated series gave her the chance to find someone who was a better fit for her. Hmm, that's a personal first. Naturally, though, she gravitates straight towards another supervillain, Poison Ivy. Their romance isn't much less destructive than hers and Joker's was, and it mostly consists of drunken hookups and crime sprees, but there are also moments where it seems like they might actually be good for each other. You don't, you don't think I'm chaotic and crazy and make a bunch of messes? No, you definitely do that, but you're trying to grow and actually doing it. And that, I mean, for me, that's what matters. I love you, I. I love you too, Harley. It's weird to feel like you have a stake in the love life of two evildoers, but damn if they don't make one hilarious couple. Obviously, I'm not pro-Arkham, but if there was any person who definitely belongs there, it would be the queen of, oh my god, and you're gone. Yeah, you shouldn't hear any of that. Number four, Princess Bubblegum and Marceline the Vampire Queen, Adventure Time, Distant Lands. It's pretty whatever, I don't know. I rarely see you this focused. Thanks, peeps. Wait, was that a diss? Like a lot of non-hetero relationships in cartoons, the connection between Princess Bubblegum and Marceline was often kept a little bit opaque. Fans were quick to ship them, but the show mostly restricted itself to merely hinting at the true nature of their relationship for a long time, showing Princess Bubblegum asleep in a shirt given to her by Marceline, but never going so far as to confirm that their dynamic was romantic. It actually took all the way to the series finale before the two finally confessed their true feelings. Even back when we weren't talking, I was so afraid something bad would happen to you and I wouldn't be there to protect you and... I don't want to lose you again. Thankfully, the Distant Land specials provided the perfect chance to explore their relationship in more detail, giving fans a proper look at a relationship they'd been desperate to see more of for years. I love you, okay? At least they'll find their skeletons entwined forever. I don't have a skeleton, but that's pretty romantic. Number three, Luce Noceda and Amity Blight, The Owl House. The Disney Channel and the parents that rely on it have often seemed to be in a bit of a panic about how to introduce young kids to the concept of queer relationships. Something's making my stomach squirm. You look nice, strange. Nice. The Owl House offers an answer so simple that they must feel silly for not thinking of it before now. Have a witch in training realize her true feelings for her classmate while the two battle a shape-shifting monster, of course. After seeing off the nefarious Grom by dancing together, Luce is still unaware of Amity's crush on her. So they aren't exactly a couple as of yet, but that definitely seems to be in the cards for future episodes. So, who did you want to ask out? Oh, it's, it's not important. After all, the couple that slays together stays together. Number two, Bob and Linda Belcher, Bob's Burgers. If you were looking for a duo to base your romantic hopes around, Bob and Linda might seem like an odd pick. They're a pretty run-of-the-mill married couple after all, struggling to keep their burger resto afloat and their kids in check. 
leaving little time or energy for romance. I'm looking forward to getting back into that beautiful kitchen. Watch out, Mom. Sounds like Dad's got a crush. It's definitely more than a crush. I mean, I love you too, Lynn. So their relationship isn't the steamiest, but it is one of the strongest. They're equal partners in everything, dividing the workload and supporting each other through it all. Bob, I'm gonna sing with Mr. Fish Show tomorrow night. That's great, Lynn. The kitchen is incredible. Everything works and it's so clean and none of the knobs fall off when I turn things on. Also, I think I might be a nightclub person. Move up a Humpty Bogart and Ingrid Birdman. Here comes Bob and Linda. They take turns getting drunk, messing up and pursuing weird dreams, and they always have each other's backs and constantly make each other laugh. I feel so, ah, uh, you know? Ah, uh, do I look, ah, uh, do I look, ah, uh, to you? Ah? Uh? Yeah, yeah, you do, kinda. Well, I don't need your approval, mister. <laughs> Just kidding, I'll take it. Most people's dream relationship might not look much like the Belchers, but maybe we'd all be happier if they did. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Adora and Katra – She-Ra and the Princesses of Power This reboot of the 80s series has quickly become one of the most joyful pieces of LGBTQ representation to be found anywhere on the small screen. So, what are we going to do now? <sighs> we can bring magic back to the universe. From Bo's charming dads Lance and George to the non-binary character Double Trouble, the series has gone out of its way to show off the whole dazzling rainbow spectrum of gender and sexual identities. The romantic relationship between our hero Adora and her arch-nemesis Catra put this matter at the very heart of the show, making for a classic Opposites Attract tale. I'm sorry, I got angry. It's something I'm working on. Oh, you are? Yes! Now can you please? Yes, I am. Watching them figure out who they were as their feelings for each other changed also makes for invaluable viewing for anyone trying to get a handle on their own identity. You love me. <laughs> You're such an idiot. I love you too. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.